So glad that you joined us today here on Welcome Home. We have a very special guest who is the CEO of Andrew Womack's Ministries there in Colorado Springs. And Paul Milligan, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you. It's a thrill sure. to have you. And you know we love our Andrew Womack. He gets more wonderful, positive comments from people. And, and I know that a lot of our viewers might know this. Some of you may not realize that we have Karis Bible College right here at Good Life 45 as a part of, of, of our ministry, really, because we support it and think so much of what you all are doing. You want to tell us a little bit, Paul, about what Karis Bible College is? Yes. Uh, Karis Bible College is a big part of Andrew's vision. Uh, basically, Andrew's vision is to reach as far and as deep with the gospel as possible in his lifetime. That's what God spoke to him. And Karis represents the deep part of that mm. vision. Far denotes bringing people into the kingdom and salvation and discipleship is what Karis is about. So we have a two-year college. The, the college system now is over 70 locations worldwide. That's great. Over 6,000 students. Wow. And the college in Colorado will have about a thousand students this this September when school mm -hmm. starts. So we have a two-year college there, and then we have uh, th three-year programs. We have eight three-year programs, mm. and I direct the business college, which is one of those three-year programs. And that's part of the reason why you're here. Yeah, yeah. I know you live in Colorado <laughs> Springs, but you're here to tell us about a summit that's getting ready to happen in October. Yes, we we started last year doing what we call Karis Business Summits. And a couple of my main instructors in the business college who are very accomplished men, Dr. Dean Radke, who was a uh, leadership team with Avon Corporation and with the Limited. And uh, God has basically given Dr. Radke a scriptural system for how to grow and manage uh, big organizations you can, from starting as an entrepreneur uh, through, through a big corporation. And then Billy Epperhart, who is a real estate developer, millionaire from the real estate business, a good friend of mine for 30 years. And Billy not only teaches real estate, but he's just a genius at organizational management. Mm -hmm. And then I'll be doing teaching as well. And I have uh, over 35 years experience building companies. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have a summit that is going to be designed for uh, business leaders, even entrepreneurs, executives sort of a, what we're calling an elite or kind of a, an advanced in some areas. Mm -hmm. We've done entrepreneurial kind of business summits, but this one we're going to teach people how do you grow a business? How do you, how do you get it to grow? How do you build leadership down into your organization? You know, as we say, when you run out of leaders, you run out of gas. Yeah. And so how do you develop leaders? How do you do it down in your organization? And then some very practical things I'm going to be teaching on what every business owner should understand about finances mm. in, in their business. And um, Dr. Radke is going to teach how to, how to build a, what he calls a highly torqued organization. <laughs> but basically what he means by that is a company that is on the grow mm -hmm. and consistently growing and, and developing. So we're looking forward. It's going to be an elite. Uh, we're, we've got, actually got uh, people can go to karissummit.com and register there, and we've got an elite registration, a VIP registration Good. that's going to be very interesting if people mm -hmm. are interested in doing that. Wonderful, They'll yeah. get to spend private time with us okay. in, in, with that VIP registration right. and some things like that. So, Paul, tell me how you, as a very successful businessman, and I would call you an entrepreneur as well, how did you go from, and was it a difficult transition to go from being an entrepreneur slash businessman to being CEO of a major, huge ministry in Colorado Springs? Big well, transition? It, parts of it were a, a challenge, major transition, but I've been associated with Andrew for so many years on the board of directors that I knew a, a great deal about the ministry. And then the rest of it is just what I learned in business, how to grow an organization, mm -hmm. how to manage it. And so that part of it wasn't as big a transition as just the learning curve. You know, Andrew yeah. has a big television ministry. Sure. I knew nothing about television, so I had to learn, learn yeah. all of that. And so it's been a challenge, but we've had a good time doing it, and the, and the ministry is continuing to grow. Absolutely. Absolutely. So. so tell me, Paul, how you have the faith component in business, which I'm sure you probably did, even though it was a, a two secular businesses that you had. Did your faith and did the faith of those around you in leadership have anything to do, do you think, with the success of your businesses? Oh, yes, ma'am. Um, you know, whether, whether any business people want to admit it or not, they get to the end of their ability and, yeah. <laughs> and what they know. Yeah. Right. And, you know, I, I just believe, Barbara, that, that if we're not doing, if we're not stretched mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and, and if we're not exercising our faith, then we're not probably doing what God's called us to do, or at least not mm -hmm. reaching our potential. Mm -hmm. Faith is very important, and I like to stay challenged in that sense. And it's certainly a challenge with Andrew. He puts his sure. faith out there. Sure. But we did this in business. I could give you mm -hmm. case, situation after situation where we just believed God and He came through yeah. because there was no other way for us to do it. Mm -hmm. some, have had some pretty significant crisis in business, as most have, and God saw us through those by faith. Mm -hmm. So what would you, what kind of advice would you give to maybe a young entrepreneur out there today who's listening or someone who's just out of school and they're trying to start their own business and, and <clears throat> really are seeking God's path for them, maybe not in the ministry world, but maybe in a secular world, which is the path that you, ch you chose for many years. What kind of advice would you give that person? Well, first of all, I think, I think Christians need to understand that they're called to business. You know, when Jesus came uh, to start his ministry and it came time to choose his disciples, you know, I probably would have gone to the synagogue looking for my disciples. Hmm. He went to the marketplace. No, that's true. That's a good point. And so yeah. what I like, what we teach our students is that this is a calling. Just, yeah. I mean, thank God for the fivefold ministry. But business leaders are called to create wealth for the kingdom of God. And there's mm. an army of us out there. Most of us don't even know it. Mm -hmm. And so we, we encourage that with an entrepreneur. The other thing is that in business, it's not what you know that's going to determine your success or failure. It's what you don't know. Mm. It's the things you don't know that sneak up on you and get mm -hmm. you in business. And so preparation is extremely important. Mm -hmm. And that's why we believe in the third year program at Karis Bible College. Yeah. Uh, for business, and we we have some stellar uh, examples and testimonies of people who come out of the business school. So you, you got to prepare. You got to know your industry. You got to know the business. And so preparation time is never wasted time yeah. in that sense. And wouldn't you say priorities have a lot to do with it? We've been talking today on the program about balancing family with work, with mm. ministry, with your personal time, with even recreation, having a great balance, but also putting into perspective, what's the most important thing? Keeping the main thing, the main thing. Yes, ma'am. And I, you know, he, this is what we teach. I, this has been just uh, freeing for so many people. Everything we teach in the business college is a scriptural basis. Believe it or not, most people wouldn't know this, especially outside the kingdom. Sure. But God has taught us in the Word how to build businesses, how to build big organizations. And God wouldn't do that unless mm. it included a quality of life mm. and in a relationship with Him. Yes. And this is why formulas don't work. Mm -hmm. Because formulas in the Word of God have never worked for me because God won't bypass a relationship with people to make yeah. formulas work for you. Yeah. And so what we, what we talk about is that quality of life has to do with doing it God's way. Yeah. And most people in, the, in our culture think of business as you got to work 90 hours a week and you got to sacrifice your family on the mm -hmm. altar of your business. You gotta, it's just not true. I love hearing that from you because yeah. you've been very successful, but you didn't feel like you had to sacrifice family. We didn't. We raised our children in the church. They, yeah. They're all serving God. Praise God. And we've had, we've, God has blessed us so much in that sense. And, you know, it's hard work to build a business, mm -hmm. but you don't have to sacrifice. Uh -huh. God doesn't make you sacrifice anything. Mm -hmm. And so we've learned how to teach our students how to have a quality of life while they're building their business. Well, I know that you came to talk about the summit. That's a part of the reason that you're here today. But honestly, Paul, that message is so important for our viewers to hear today, for me to hear today. You know, we never need to sacrifice relationships over that achieving kind of, I mean, if you're an entrepreneur, you're somebody who is a type A personality. You want to achieve. Achieve. You have a task, you have a to-do list, and yet you know in your heart that relationships are more important than, are. than all of the other. My mother used to say that, that people are the only thing that matter in life. Oh. Everything else is window dressing. I love that. And so we, that. We, uh, we adopted that in our business. Mm -hmm. You know, one of my values that we publish in Global Technical Service, the company that we built, is that we value people over profit. Mm. And wow. a lot of people don't understand wow. what that means. You still have to, you have to have profit sure. to be successful. Sure. But there's a trade-off there, and, and you have to teach people how to develop their own personal mm -hmm. lives, how to have time for their families, have time with God. Mm -hmm. And we've, we, the whole time we were building our companies, we watched that. I had young men mm. with young families, and I guarded, helped them Good. guard that wow. in their relationships with God, and it built a successful organization. Well, and part of the reason it was successful, I think, Paul, I don't know that much about you, but I would think that God honored that incredible um, work ethic in you and that, uh, that desire to see family over profit. 
people over profit. That is wonderful. Let me just ask you one more question because we're about out of time. But you've been a Christian, Paul, for a long time. Yes, uh, love the Lord. We love Andrew Womack and all the ministry things that he does here in Central Florida and around the world. What is your purpose in life? You, Paul Milligan. That's interesting. I wish I had time to really tell you the whole story, but let me let me give you the cliff notes. Um, in 1998, I had got it. You had pretty much made it clear that I was to be in business and built these businesses, and I had prophecies from the 70s on through. So we knew we were doing what God called us to do. But in 1998, we went through a, a, a process of taking the company public so that I could get my other investors out mm -hmm. and get their money out. That didn't work out, and I don't have time to go into that story. But let, let, here, I say that to say this. When I left New York, we were actually about to go public on Wall Street the next morning. Mm. When I left New York, I stayed several days. My wife and my executives and their wives went on home. And when I was in the airplane flying back to Texas, I was just praying. I said, God, I don't have a vision past this. Mm. What have you called me to do? Yeah. And the Lord spoke to me th during that time and said, I've called you to teach, train, mentor, and disciple the next generation of mm. business leaders. That just that was just so wow. peaceful. And wow. I, I said, okay, I can do this. Yeah. And that's how we ended up at Andrews doing mm -hmm. the business college. I started mm -hmm. the business college five years ago. Right. So we're doing exactly what God told us. We're teaching, we're training, we're mentoring and discipling a generation of business leaders that are going to do it God way with, with God's way with God's scriptural system. Right. Right. Paul Milligan, you Milligan, you are a rock star. I so appreciate you and your heart, how you love the Lord, teaching, training, and mentoring the next generation for Disciples for Christ. So uh, thank you so much for being here with us today. October 12th through 14th is the B Karis Business Summit that's going to be held here in Orlando. You'll hear more about that, and we'll have some of that information up on the screen for you to look that up if you are interested in that. So again, thank you so much, Paul, for being here with us. Thank you, Barbara. Stay with us. We've got more good stuff coming up.